Intro to Logic Part 2, Premises versus Conclusions. A premise is a statement that is intended to prove a conclusion, and a conclusion is a statement that is intended to be proven by the premises. Here's an example. All humans are mortal, Socrates is human, therefore Socrates is mortal. In this argument, the conclusion is, therefore Socrates is mortal, and the premises are all humans are mortal and Socrates is human. The premises prove the conclusion true, assuming they're true, and so that's why they count as premises. The conclusion is the main point that the argument is trying to prove. We can often identify premises and conclusion by looking at indicator words. Here's a list of conclusion indicators. The most common is therefore. Others include thus, so, Hence, consequently, in conclusion, it follows that, we can infer that, it proves that, this suggests that, implies that, we can conclude that because of this and for this reason. The indicators that consist of a phrase or clause are less common, but they do happen. In the meme on the right, it says, I don't know, therefore aliens. The therefore is the conclusion indicator. Now this is, strictly speaking, not a whole argument because the conclusion is not a complete proposition. It may be implying something such as, therefore, aliens built ancient human monuments or something like that. This does count as an actual argument. However, it is a fallacy or a bad argument form. Specifically, this is the fallacy of appeal to ignorance, where you start from a lack of knowledge in your premise and then you try to prove something definitively using the conclusion. However, the word therefore does help us because it functions as a conclusion indicator. Premise indicators include words such as because or since. Those are the most common. Other premise indicators include given that, assuming that, as shown by, for the reason that, as indicated by, the fact that, it follows from, or on the grounds that. One thing to keep in mind is the difference between the premise indicator because and the conclusion indicator because of this. It may be confusing, but when the word because appears alone before a statement, the statement that follows because is the premise. When you see the whole phrase because of this, the two words of this are referring back to a previously stated premise. So that's why the whole phrase because of this uh, indicates the conclusion. Let's look at some sample problems where we identify the premises and conclusion of an argument. A couple things to keep in mind when you're doing this task. First of all, you won't always have premise or conclusion indicator words. Oftentimes you do, but not always. If there's no indicators present, you have to rely upon other clues, such as which statements can be used to prove others. If a statement can be proven by others, it's the conclusion. If a statement could be used to prove another, it's a premise. That's the basic idea. Also note that the order of premise and conclusion can vary. Premise can go first, in the middle, or last, and same with conclusion. So it's really the underlying logical connections between statements that help you identify them as premise or conclusion. So let's start with this sample argument and look for any indicator words. Aristotle was the first to classify arguments into types based on their logical form and to classify logical forms as valid or invalid. So Aristotle is the inventor of ancient Greek logic. Are there any indicator words for premise or conclusion? The word so is indeed an indicator. Does it indicate premise or conclusion? The answer is conclusion. So the statement that follows so is the conclusion of our argument. Now, this means that the sentence that comes before probably contains premises. However, we need to be careful because it is possible in a passage that contains a logical argument for there to also be words or phrases or even whole sentences that are not part of the argument. They don't help justify the conclusion. So we're going to look through each part of that sentence to see if all of it counts as the premise or just part of it. The answer is all of it because all of that sentence can help prove the conclusion. Let's look at another sample problem. You should vote for Joe Biden since he is the most he is the candidate most committed to social justice. Are there any indicator words? We have the word since. Does that indicate premise or conclusion? 
The answer is premise. So Joe Biden is the candidate most committed to social justice is a premise. And note that I've rewritten it slightly. In the original argument, it uses the pronoun he. To add clarity, we want to indicate what this pronoun is referring to. Now let's look for the conclusion. The conclusion is just the first clause of the sentence. You should vote for Joe Biden. And this indicates something important, which is that premise and conclusion can be combined into one grammatical sentence and still count as an argument. English and other natural languages are things that tend to be very flexible. So you can express the same inference, the same logical idea in many different ways. Let's look at another sample problem. Trump is the only candidate who cares about securing the border and establishing fair trade with China. Vote Trump in 2020. So are there any indicator words in this argument? The answer is no. We don't see conclusion indicators like therefore, thus, or so, nor do we see premise indicators such as because or since. So how do we know what the conclusion is? We try to figure out what the main point of the argument is. What is it trying to prove? The answer is the last sentence, vote Trump in 2020. This is an interesting case because this exclamation mark means that grammatically, this statement is actually a command. If you look at the wording and the punctuation, it's saying vote Trump. So that's actually the imperative mood in English, which is used for commands. And yet we said before, commands are not statements. They cannot be parts of argument. So what's going on here? You can use language rhetorically. Sometimes commands or questions can actually be indirectly making a statement. So this is called rhetorical use of language. We'll look at this in more detail on another video, but it's good to be aware that this is a possible thing you'll encounter. So we can rewrite this as a statement. You should vote for Trump in 2020. So now we have to identify the premise. The premise is the first sentence. Trump is the only candidate who cares about securing the border and establishing fair trade with China. So that is supposed to prove the conclusion. Next up, part three, arguments versus non-arguments. This video is about how, how to tell the difference between passages of writing or speech that contain logical arguments from those that don't. 